I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party that's under the complete control of an elitist cabal of warmongers who are driven by cowardly wokeness, who divide us by racializing every issue and stoking anti-white racism. I did not see this coming. Tulsi, how could you? Hey friends, Abdul Al Said here. Today, we're talking about the inevitable fact that Tulsi Gabbard loved the Democratic Party. Nobody gives a F. But before we get going, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the little bell so you don't miss our content and tell your friends. Word of mouth really does go a long way. Tulsi Gabbard has been, we'll just say fascist adjacent, like fashy for a decade now. And this shouldn't have surprised anyone, but Tulsi Gabbard announced that she's leaving the Democratic Party. Well, good riddance, because the truth of the matter is, is that Tulsi had been an anchor on the Democratic Party for a long time. Because right now, Democrats are the only bulwark between us and straight up fascism. And it seems like Tulsi woke up yesterday and chose fascism, like she has for every day over the last 10 years. Now, if you didn't see this coming, if you were one of those people in my menchies talking about how Tulsi Gabbard was awesome every time that I'd flay her for being fulminantly anti-Muslim, uh, this one's for you. Because if you didn't see this coming, there were all the signs. Like, I don't know, the time she decided to fly to Syria without telling anybody in Democratic leadership, despite being a Democratic congresswoman, and meet with dictator Bashar al-Assad, who's literally the butcher of Syria, who was decimating towns in his own country, who is allied with Vladimir Putin in the name of fact-finding. Well, what kind of fact-finding is this? All you gotta know is that people are being killed. Meanwhile, Tulsi says that she's anti-war, despite the fact that the people that she supports are committing war against their own people. And if Syria wasn't enough, there's the fact that she's gone full on embrace of Narendra Modi, the prime minister of India. Now, if you haven't been watching what's happening in India, which they call the world's biggest democracy, all you really need to know is that it's becoming less and less democratic. Modi has weaponized anti-Muslim hatred, just like he did when he led the state of Gujarat back in 2002, and a thousand plus people died in anti-Muslim riots. He recognized that this was an opportunity for him to unite a Hindu base against a perceived internal enemy, which, by the way, is what fascists do. And so when he came to the United States, Tulsi full-on embraced him. Oh, and uh, if that wasn't enough, when she ran for president in 2020, ran for president in 2020, her biggest donor was a full-on Vladimir Putin apologist. Y'all, can't make this up. But all of that, well, that, that's foreign policy. And Tulsi's done all this, embracing fascist warmongers in the name of being anti-war. But maybe you could excuse Tulsi Gabbard because all of that is happening outside of the borders of our own country. But the thing that probably should have tipped you off is this from a few months ago. Now, whatever your views are on Donald Trump, there's no denying that the unprecedented raid on his Palm Beach home earlier this week has set our country on a dangerous new course, and there's no turning back. The FBI's raid on Mar-a-Lago changed the country that we grew up in. We grew up believing that, hey, our government will apply the law equally to all Americans, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. We're seeing more and more that that country no longer exists. Yeah, that's Tulsi Gabbard, Democrat, anchoring the television show of the single most fascist television presenter in America, Tucker Carlson. Literally anchored a show, filled in for him, like read the fascist talking points on his behalf. So if that didn't tip you off that Tulsi Gabbard was never really a Democrat, what she did yesterday was just announce what she's always been, which is somebody who does not believe in democracy and has always embraced fascists. So Tulsi Gabbard, goodbye, Felicia. We don't need you here. Nobody ever has. and. Frankly, as a Muslim American, we've been trying to say it for a long effing time because there's always been this like subtle anti-Muslim bigotry at the heart of everything Tulsi has ever said. And all of us have been kind of looking at folks being like, yo, really? Like she's a Democrat now? The thing you have to understand is that Tulsi has never been a Democrat, but there's a reason that she decided to announce her parting from the Democratic Party right now. And that's because, well, we're in midterm season and this, well, like I told you, this is the most important election of our lifetimes. Why is that the case? Well, because Republicans are running a slate of people who have denied democracy itself. And yeah, that may sound kind of counterintuitive, like how do you run for office in a democracy but then deny the democracy you're running in? But what Tulsi's basically said is, yeah, I'm with them. And she's doing it right now because she hopes to pull unwitting progressives with her. Y'all, don't take the bait. Tulsi hasn't been a progressive, frankly, ever. She is a political opportunist who dressed up in our colors 
to get elected to Congress in Hawaii, which is super blue, by the way. And now that she's got a bit of a platform, she's leveraging a platform to take the costume off and be who she always was. This is a fascist-loving, democracy-hating, attention-seeking opportunist. Don't follow. Oh, and by, and by the way, I, I get the frustration that people have with this moment. It, it kind of, it's hard to fight like hell to just preserve where you are when you know there's so much more that we should be fighting for. Permit me a sports analogy here. You want to win the game, and sometimes you may be losing. That doesn't mean that you don't have to fight to equalize to end up winning the game. People deserve a lot more than they're getting from their government right now, whether it's healthcare or housing or high-quality jobs. But the fight for those things can't start with siding with folks who've made campaigning for global war and maximal poverty in the United States their key issues for decades. Y'all, don't take the bait. Don't take the bait. I'm telling you, don't take the bait. Hey friend, thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos like this and have more of your questions answered, click the subscribe button on this screen. And if you want to support me and want more content, I hope that you'll subscribe to The Incision, my newsletter. There, I reflect a bit further, go a bit deeper on some of these issues, and I interview some of the leading thinkers of this moment. The link to subscribe is on the screen here. See you soon.